the edge of those trees there. Perfect bass bait. Have a look at it. It's all the stuff flying around on the surface and falling onto the water and just looking in these mangroves that you can't help but think about using surface lures all day. You know, there's loads of rim and uh, even jacks in there that are taking stuff off the surface. So maybe we'll have a go next sort of 15, 20 minutes and see if we can get something. Good fish, and he's taking me around. Oh. Here he comes, he's come back around. He's trying to get me up in those mangroves there. And he had, oh, here he is, he's out again. The hook in the top of the head, so if he takes off deep, the hooks could pull pretty easy. I've just backed the drag off. It's only shallow here, but it's mainly sand. It's going right under the boat. Maybe he's there he is. He's a lovely fish. Oh. Come on, come on. Oh. Got one of the hooks just pull in. Yeah, they did too. Get in there, mate. Yeah! Ah, oh, that's a corker fish. Oh. Wow. Get that out. It's just caught just in the eyeliner. I've got to tell you about this because Fishing just started to get a little bit slow and I was sort of wondering why it winds up. Why the conditions aren't really ideal um, for casting. Yeah, I'll bring you around so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just throwing this drawer in there like a champion. Um, right. Hang on a sec, he's sliding down on the... You might be able to see that there. He's just bitten straight through down onto the net. Stupid getting my hand anywhere near that. Right, I'll wait for him to get his teeth out and just relax a little bit. But the fishing had been a little bit slow for about the last half an hour. It was partly my fault, I reckon, because I'd started to drift in to get better cast because of the wind. And I think I might have been spooking a lot of these fish that are just sitting just under the surface. So I kept out, I moved back away from the bank and within five casts, bang, I was on. Um, and I sort of started casting a little bit further ahead of the boat, which helped as well, I think. Um, there's so many small little things like details like that that improve my catch rate. And I've sort of learned over the years, I think, that um, just trying to stay aware of those things. I still get caught in the habit of, you know, taking shortcuts or whatever drifting into the bank and not really caring too much when you get into the, you know, a slow patch or whatever. But, um, yeah, maybe I'll, when I find a quiet section, I might just pull off and, and go through some of the details of the things that sort of help me keep my catch um, more consistent and some of the techniques, I suppose, or little tricks or things that I've learnt or people have shown me 
um, that have improved my catch rates. But here's some proof that it's working. Again, I'm just fishing these fringes, just these, it's only a metre deep in there, it's shallow water. Um, you know, that, the article that Steve Booth wrote about 15 years ago just describes really well. If you haven't read it, you should get on and have a look. It's on, um, you just Google search, mangrove jack fishing and Stephen Booth, and he's got a, uh, an article called Fishing the Fringes. And it's very much like what I'm doing here. Um, I'm mainly using surface lures and little divers, and uh, geez, it really works. Well, a lot of the fish are, are, are fairly small, but you do get some big ones, and this one's probably gone over 40. Um, but anywhere up to mid-50s, you can get them in amongst these shallow mangrove roots. Such exciting fishing, because you can see everything happen. It's visual, even with diving lures, you can see the jacks come out and smash it well worth giving it a try. I just want to show you very quickly how to grab them with these grips. You're best off going straight down the middle like that. You can see he's got those two big teeth that sit at the front and all those ones along the bottom and you know one of the mistakes would be to grab him along here because as he falls and his weight falls or he locks his jaw and then sits out if he starts to go nuts you can start to throw his teeth out and I've seen it happen where teeth just start flying all over the bottom of the boat and it's really sad for the fish so I think the best thing to do to look after them is to get the bogus on them nice and quick just like that straight down the middle and always support their belly as well especially the bigger ones some of the smaller ones are okay but just that jaw structure their bones they're not built for hanging their whole weight on you know even though they're strong closing holding a big one just by the boga grips it's probably not a good idea to look after the fish so anyway just being careful and looking after them it's important I think if we want them to survive and keep their survival rates up if we're going to practice catch and release you've got to put a bit of care in there with them as well another beautiful fish let's have a quick look what he is on the measurer yeah he's up around 40 there you mate. Oh, let's get another one. What in here looks amazing. The shadows there. Not good enough calf though. got to be one in there, you can see a little sand bank it will drop off, that's a bit better yes, he's there, got him yeah oh, he's not a bad fish either Oh, get me out of there. He's a beauty. Rocker. Afraid these bigger ones, they need to be netted, I reckon. Not ready. See, he's just lightly coloured. Look at those blades on the fidget spinning as he comes in. You can see those mangrove roots, he knows where they all are. This is a better fish too, folks. Yeah, that's a fish. Oh, get in here. You little beauty. I'll just wet the, uh, I'll just wet the mat down. Get a measure on it. Lovely fish. Oh, have a look at the fangs on them. Have a look at those. Oh, 
Oh. They are nasty. down a little bit. Just looks after the slime on him. We'll get a measure on him. Yeah, he's well over the 40. Oh, yeah, 42, 43. Probably there's a fair splash there. I probably got the lens all dirty. I know from this one I do. But look, check out the teeth on the fella. Can you see those fangs? Oh, it's awesome. It's putting some damage into the lure, which is cool. But I just want to talk about the, uh, the sorts of lures that I'm using to catch these things. Um, I'll put this one back put this one back and then we'll have a chat about it. First got into surface fishing and top water fishing at about the age of 14 and at the risk of being beaten up by my older brother. Every Friday afternoon after school I'd flog his waders and nick off up to the Hins Dam. Fully covered, balaclava, mittens, long sleeve shirt to hide from the mozzies, and I'd go walking the grassy banks of Hins Dam right on dusk until just after dark, hoping that my homemade surface lure would just even get one surface hit from a bass. Since then, I've had a huge passion for topwater baits, and uh, casting them for jacks has been fantastic in the last few years. I'd like to show you a couple of my favorites. These fizzers with props at either end, they're fantastic. Rapala have released one in the last couple of years. Um, that's a beautiful lure. It's got a raised etch scale pattern, holographic eye, and um, holographic finish too. And I've caught a fair few fish on that. My favorite fizzer is this one by Hayden. It's called a Boy Howdy. Looks a lot like a gold bomber and that's its appeal. It's so shiny in the water. It throws off this light just beautifully and um, it's got a very high relative density so it sits right on top of the surface. There's no casting chamber or balls in there, it's completely hollow, but for some reason it's been designed really well and it'll cast fantastically just direct straight into the snag. That's why I like it. Some of the other surface lures that are really good are these things like this um, Zara Puppy by Hayden, this Tango Dancer. They're walk the dog style lures and in the right conditions this subtle approach it's really quiet, just dancing and walking across the surface with a twitch twitch of your rod, that can be so effective, especially coming off the edge of a, of a sandbank and coming into a deep section where there's structure just down there. The jacks love that. This other style of surface top water baits are these poppers and things like um, Lucky Craft G splashes, they're really popular. These river to sea bubble popper, um, calling peppers by Tiemco. What else have I got? Oh, this is a favourite of mine. These Berkeley Frenzy Poppers. They're a lot like a Rapala Skeeter Pop and they've got that big cup at the front. So the noise they throw out when you twitch your rod in the right way, they're fantastic. And because of that cup, they don't move very far through the water. So if you want to keep your lure right in that strike zone and wake them up, these poppers, they'll sit in there and just twitch and throw out a really loud popping noise. They're fantastic on jacks in the right conditions too. I really hope this next clip inspires you to persist with jacks on top water and ignites your passion for it because, geez, I enjoy fishing for them like this when the conditions are right. I think jacks on top water, it's unforgettable fishing. Take a look at this. Oh. 
Oh, Davy. Good fish. Good fish. Yep. Oh, How does that feel? Yes, Davy. Oh. Oh, Jack underneath. Oh, look at him, look at him, look at him, look at him. Yeah, got him. Drop him. Oh. Now again, look at him, it's still out yet. Oh, get in there, boys. Both on there. I've got both of them. Oh, it's called the double. Yeah, you little beauty. Yeah. Oh, I just knocked it into the air. Selfie flick, and when you oh, you just saw it coming. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I had to get him over. That was awesome. They just can't resist it. Boy. We are in the midst of one of those sessions. Yeah, Jane. 
Thanks, mate. Oh, yeah. Thanks, boys. They're in here, aren't they? It's, incre it's incredible. It's only a metre deep through here. And there's these big 50s just woofing fish down. Just the colours of the shadows sitting around as you bring it through the dark patch into the into the little bit where the sun's shining all over it. Oh yeah, that was amazing! Oh, did you see it, Dave? The the Rapala ones. Uh, oh yeah. We're only in a metre of water. Isn't it insane? You can hear those cicadas going, and you just know that that's what they're slaying, though. Davey, good fish, good fish. Oh, well done, Dave. Epic, mate, well done. Yeah, yeah, Dave. <laughs> Look at that. Don't you love when they just rip the drag? Oh, big one, Davey. That's a big fish. Did they? Oh, look at it. Yeah. Still wants it though. Come and get it. If you want it, come and get it. Yeah. It is too. It was his uh, bigger brother that came out and grabbed it. Right there, two of them. Look at him! Look at him! Got him! That's so sick. out of those oh that was awesome straight out of those mangroves there oh as soon as i got it outside of the mangroves where he could hit at it he just caned it yeah got him right in between the little root system yeah that's fine you can see the tongue mm.